In this video, I'll be demonstrating a palette swapping technique. The idea behind palette swapping is pretty simple. If you've used color keys before, that's pretty much all you need. You just blit a image with a color key set to the color you want to swap from onto a surface that's all just the color you want to swap to. Anyways, the script I've got here is just loading an image, my tree image, and then blitting it onto the screen and I'm scaling it up since it's pixel art. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have to just write a palette swapping function. I'm going to put in a couple colors and we'll see the palette change. So to start off, I'm going to show you what it looks like currently. This is what it looks like if I run the script currently. It just splits my tree onto the main surface and you can see it here. I'm going to be changing these leaves to a pink purplish color. Okay, time to write our palette swapping function. It's going to take the image I'm doing the palette swap on, so I'm just going to call that surface. Then I'm going to want the old color that I'm swapping and the new color that I'm swapping to. So first off, I'm going to make a copy of my surface that I'm doing the palette swap on. So image copy equals tree image dot copy. This is just so I can get the dimensions. You can actually also just do pygame dot surface tree image that get size. Now you just fill it with the new color you want. And like I said, you just set the color key of the old image to the color you want to get rid of. So that those sections become transparent and when you put it onto the new color image, that replaces all the parts that are transparent. So image Cop well first one need to set the color key so surf that set color key to old C. And then image copy that split surface at zero zero because this is the same dimension image. So we just go top left corner so it lines up. And then we can return our image copy. One thing you're gonna have to keep in mind is that if you set the color key beforehand for say you've got like black that you wanted to be transparent in the image and I've actually got that in my image, you're going to have to go afterwards and modify your color key. So this overrides whatever you were doing before with your color key, so you gotta account for that. So I'm going to do the palette swapping. So tree image equals palette swap. I'm going to do tree image, I'm gonna pass that in. And I'm gonna put in the old color, which is this is just one part of the leaf color. And then I gotta put in a new color, which is this. I'm going to do a couple more of these. All right, now I've got all my colors swapped that I want. And I just gotta set my color key. and we should be good to go. So as you can see, I've now got this gradient of the purple to pink colors, and actually there's a little bit of an orange in here, on my leaves. The colors have been completely swapped with just that function. If you want a palette swapping system, you might want to have a list of associated colors that you swap between, and then you can just automate this thing so you don't have to write a bunch of those lines calling that function. Also, a bit of a warning, this is blitting the image an extra time for every single time you swap a color. So you have to be careful with doing this inside the game loop. If you mess with the colors too much, you can cause your game to lag out because you're blitting the image an extra time or quite a few times, depending on how many colors you're swapping. Typically, this is just used beforehand if you want to swap some colors and then you just store that image and then render that. Uh, or and sometimes I'll use this to change the colors of my particles. In that case, the particle images are so small, I'm not really worried about that, so I do actually just change the color every frame. And then there's my text system, which I use palette swaps on the text image that I load, and I can just change the color of my text that way. It's got all sorts of uses. And if you saw my last tutorial video on text systems, this is 
very useful there. Anyways, that's pretty much it for this video. If you've got any questions, you can head over to my Discord server. I've got a channel dedicated to questions there. Although, if you're having any issues, I'd first recommend trying out the project download from the description. Almost every single issue I see in the comments can be resolved in some sense by people trying out the code in the description. If you're interested in my projects, you can check out my devlog series on this channel, or you can go to my Twitter account where I post a lot of my progress there. Hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video.